besides being two high-ranking black politicians in the United States. Kamala Harris and Barack Obama are two influential leaders who know how to enjoy life. But have you ever wondered who has the most luxurious life? In this video, you'll see a heated battle between Kamala Harris and Barack Obama. The two U.S. politicians like to enjoy sophisticated and safe vehicles, but who has the best cars? Obama, for example, it is speculated that he once owned a 2005 Chrysler 300C, a vehicle valued at $30,000, but that the car's subsequent owner tried unsuccessfully to auction it off for $1 million. He also once owned a Ford Escape Hybrid, valued at $40,000. Obama has also been seen with a Jeep Grand Cherokee, an SUV that can be found costing around $55,000. Currently, because he is a former president, he is driven by members of the U.S. Secret Service. The vehicle used is believed to be an armored and fully customized Chevrolet Suburban to provide maximum security. Kamala Harris has already been spotted in a Buick, a very elegant classic design car that costs an average of $29,000. For everyday use, the vice president likes more modern cars, such as her Chevrolet Bolt EV, one of the most popular electric vehicles due to its practicality, equipped with an engine capable of producing 200 horsepower. And for those who want to drive a car like this, you need to spend more than $30,000 on their newest models. Kamala also owns a Chevrolet Suburban, with which she has been seen on several occasions. It's a versatile, robust, and spacious SUV, made to accommodate a large family. And to have this great vehicle in your garage, you need to shell out around $62,000. As they have cars in the same price range, we'll consider this round a draw. Points for both! The two American personalities have spared no expense in finding good places to live, but who has the most valuable mansion? The most expensive property Kamala owns with her husband Doug Emhoff is a 3,500-square-foot home in the Brentwood neighborhood of Los Angeles, California, which was purchased in 2012 for $2.8 million, but is now estimated to be worth $5.2 million. Meanwhile, Barack is believed to have acquired a beautiful 30-acre waterfront property on the island of Martha's Vineyard in the U.S. state of Massachusetts. The house built in 2001 has 7,000 square feet of living space and is spread over seven bedrooms, including an impressive master suite with fireplace and balcony, as well as eight bathrooms. The property features a modern family kitchen and another chef's kitchen, a circular formal dining room surrounded by a wall full of windows, and a living room with a vaulted ceiling and stone fireplace. There are several entertainment spaces, including a lounge with a pool table, a terrace overlooking the bay, and a relaxing outdoor spa tub. The expansive lawn and incredible water views create the perfect setting for the Obama family to relax. Summer days can be even more refreshing by the poolside, a spot surrounded by trees, and an ideal space to relax. The property also offers a barn for storing kayaks and boats, along with a two-car garage. By purchasing this property, the Obama family gains direct access to a lake that mixes fresh and salt water and opens up to the ocean. According to Forbes magazine, the former president closed the purchase of this incredible vacation home, which looks more like a paradise retreat, at the end of 2019, paying an impressive $11.7 million. And for having a more expensive mansion, Obama wins this round. Point for him! Both political figures have plenty of money to buy whatever they want. But who has the most extravagant spending? Kamala Harris, for example always likes to be well-dressed for any occasion and doesn't usually skimp on high-value accessories such as her Cartier Ballon Blue, a stainless steel watch in yellow gold, which has a silver dial with Roman numerals. And it's no wonder that this luxurious accessory costs around $8,400. As well as watches, Kamala Harris also loves to invest in other luxury items. From a very young age, for example, the vice president was already clicked with beautiful jewelry, and it's no wonder that she is speculated to own it. Nicole Rose fine white gold rings worth $495. Tiffany ring set in yellow gold for $1,800. The Pearl Queen ring from Caps Fine for $2,850. Mikamoto feather collection earrings for $6,500. Large gumball lollipop earrings by Irene Newworth for $11.6,000. White Gold Ring with Pearl by Brigitte for $25.5,000. Pearl and Diamond Necklace by Oscar Heyman for $54,000.
and even a customized necklace with pearls and white diamonds by W. Rosado, which she wore during her inauguration. And although we don't know how much it cost, it certainly wasn't cheap. Obama, on the other hand, seems to like to travel and stay in luxurious places. On one of his vacations, he visited the island of Tetiroa in French Polynesia, where he enjoyed the paradisiacal tropical landscapes of this destination. On this occasion, the former president stayed at the Brando Resort, one of the most luxurious ecological hotels in the world. The place has extremely comfortable and refined facilities, offering plenty of contact with nature. And to spend a night at this resort, you have to pay up to $4,000. Obama has also rented a very private $22.5 million mansion for the summer, located in a small village in Massachusetts. With a 40,000-square-foot lot and a 200-square-foot home, the destination offers plenty of comfort for the Obama family. The property has a total of five bathrooms and six bedrooms to accommodate guests well. It is also possible to enjoy a beautiful infinity-edge pool and even a private gym. A real luxury! On another occasion, the Obama couple rented a very modern and luxurious mansion for a season in the upscale and very exclusive Hollywood Hills neighborhood in Los Angeles. The mansion is a massive 12,200 square feet, with plenty of room to accommodate many guests, who can occupy the spacious seven bedrooms. The master suite, for example, is quite luxurious, featuring a balcony that overlooks the city and a bathroom with a relaxing tub. Outside the mansion, there are armchairs to relax in, as well as a large outdoor pool with a spa attached. When it comes to entertainment, the house offers many options, such as a lounge with a pool table and bar space, a spa area with an indoor pool, whirlpool, and dry sauna, a fitness room for Pilates with a relaxing massage bed, and also a private cinema room. But, without a doubt, the highlight of the residence is an aquarium that houses three sharks, which also has a vertical garden. And although it is not known how much the Obama couple paid to be accommodated in this mansion, one can imagine that it was not cheap at all. After all, the property is valued at $23 million. And because they spend their fortunes in very different ways, we'll consider it a draw. Point for both. Both politicians don't skimp on comfort when it comes to getting around, but who enjoys the most luxurious transportation? Starting with Obama is known that he has rented a boat belonging to David Geffen, called Rising Sun, a 450-foot superyacht that has hosted artists such as Oprah, Leonardo DiCaprio, Paul McCartney, and others. The yacht built in Germany in 2004 has four decks, so there is plenty of room for passengers. This boat is considered to be the 11th largest yacht in the world, with an estimated value of $300 million. In other words, renting it for a trip must have cost Obama quite a bit of money. Kamala Harris, on the other hand, is always flaunting beautiful jets on her social networks. And among the models she has used is what appears to be a Bombardier Global 6000, one of the largest and most modern jets in the world, with a range of almost 7,000 miles. At almost 100 feet long, this large aircraft can offer every luxury imaginable. Its interior can carry up to 18 passengers in comfort. And to enjoy all this luxury, there's no doubt that you'll have to fork out quite a bit of money, as the charter price for this aircraft is around $10,500 per hour. On another occasion, Kamala Harris chose to use a Gulfstream G550 during a trip to Nashville. This is a long-range business jet that is among the most modern and luxurious in the world. At 96 feet long, this air transport has a high and spacious cabin with a compact galley, a dining area, and a lounge. It can carry up to 13 passengers. And to charter a jet of this model, you need to spend up to $12,000 an hour. As Vice President of the United States, Kamala Harris can also enjoy unconventional air transportation, such as a Sikorsky UH-60, a twin-engine military multi-purpose helicopter. This aircraft is over 64 feet long and can travel at a maximum speed of 182 miles per hour. And because it is a military aircraft, the helicopter has a high level of security, ideal for transporting the country's political leaders. And as estimated by Forbes, a Sikorsky UH-60 costs up to $25 million depending on the version. The most expensive aircraft in which Kamala Harris usually travels is the presidential plane used exclusively by the president and his team. Known as Air Force One, the Boeing VC-25 is a military version of the Boeing 747, adapted to serve the nation's head of state. 
Emblazoned with blue and white colors and with United States of America written on the side, this plane manages to offer all the security and comfort imaginable. Inside, the president and his team enjoy 4,000 square feet of space spread over three levels, including a suite for the president, equipped with a large office. The plane is also capable of refueling in the air, providing unlimited range and transporting the president wherever he needs to travel. And of course, to enjoy all this, there is a high cost to the state coffers. It is estimated that just one hour's flight in the aircraft costs around $210,000. Considering that they don't own these means of transportation, points for both of them. Both political leaders have lived in many places during their careers. But which one has the most luxurious real estate portfolio? At the time she became district attorney of San Francisco, for example, Harris acquired a beautiful apartment to live in the city. The loft-style unit was built in 1998 and has just over 1,000 square feet of interior space, offering everything the lawyer needed to lead a comfortable life at the start of her political career. The open-plan living room has a fireplace and two large windows, which bring an abundance of natural light into the room, while the dining space for six is right next door, with a wall full of picture frames. The chef's kitchen has a large counter, updated cabinets and top-of-the-line appliances, such as a gas stove. The unit also has a small office next to a bookcase, where the lawyer probably spent a lot of time working. It also has a laundry room and other accommodations, such as a balcony for enjoying the views. On the second floor, there is the bedroom where Kamala Harris rested, which, although simple, appears to be very cozy. There are also two bathrooms in the apartment, one for visitors and a private one next to the bedroom, which includes a closet with wooden shelves. And according to media reports, in 2004 Kamala Harris spent $489,000 on this apartment until she decided to sell it in 2021 for $799,000. Another property the vice president once owned was an exquisite condominium located in Washington, D.C., in the West Light Building. With more than 1,700 square feet of space, the unit is elegantly decorated and has many amenities, such as a living room with oak floors, a dining area with views of the outside, a kitchen with white Italian cabinets and a table in the center for casual meals. There are also two bedrooms, the master suite being customized to suit the owner's tastes, integrating a beautiful walk-in closet where Kamala could store her luxury items and a bathroom with a large dressing table. The other bedroom is not far behind, with a glass wall offering a beautiful view of the outside. In addition to all this, the building also offers seating areas to enjoy the views of the city, as well as a heated rooftop swimming pool and a gym with state-of-the-art equipment. According to some sources, the lawyer bought the unit in 2017 for $1,775,000 and sold it four years later for $1,850,000. In addition to these properties that Kamala Harris has acquired, she also lives in state properties as vice president, such as the historic Number One Observatory Circle, located in Washington, D.C., which has been home to several high-ranking politicians since 1974. Built in the 19th century, the place has more than 9,100 square feet of space and has undergone many renovations over the years, making it stunning down to the smallest detail. In total, there are six bedrooms in the property, and although it was built for just $20,000, its price today is unknown, but it must certainly be worth a few million with so many updates that have been made. And to give you an idea of the total value of Kamala Harris's real estate portfolio, it is estimated that she and her husband have already spent between $8 and $10 million on real estate. Obama, meanwhile, after leaving the White House, he and his family moved into a very comfortable mansion in Washington, D.C., and it is the second most expensive house in the neighborhood, losing first place to Jeff Bezos' estate. The historic 1920s residence has a period exterior design with brick veneers, while the interior is more modern, updated, and refined. The property has 8,100 square feet of living space, with an impressive total of nine bathrooms, including a toilet, and nine bedrooms to accommodate the Obama couple and their two daughters, as well as several extra rooms for possible guests. The decor of the house follows a classic and clean style. In the main kitchen, for example, the planned furniture is white, the countertops are marble, and it is fully equipped with stainless steel appliances. Just entering the main living room there is a cozy fireplace, where Obama can keep himself warm on the colder days or receive his friends for a good chat. The dining room is quite sophisticated, with a wooden ceiling, while the walls are white. 
Outside, the property has a large backyard with armchairs for the family to enjoy the outdoors. And after living renting in this property, Barack Obama decided to buy the house in 2017 for $8.1 million. And if we disregard the properties in the state where Kamala lives, Barack Obama owns a more expensive property, so points for him. As two world-famous black politicians, there's no doubt that they've amassed huge fortunes. But who will be the richest? The amounts Harris received varied according to the political office she held. When she was District Attorney of San Francisco in 2004, it is speculated that she was paid $140,000 a year. In 2010, when she became California's Attorney General, Kamala Harris's annual earnings rose to $159,000. Then, after becoming a United States Senator in 2017, she is believed to have earned around $174,000 a year. As the 49th Vice President of the United States, she receives an annual salary of $235,000 a year. In other words, she must have accumulated $940,000 in salary alone over the course of her term. In 2024, Kamala announced her candidacy for president, and if elected, she will become the most powerful woman in America. In addition to her earnings in political office, Kamala Harris is also a great writer, and it is estimated that the lawyer has pocketed around $750,000 from book royalties. And although that's a great amount, it's not all the money Kamala Harris has in her account. That's because she's married to Doug Emhoff, a prominent lawyer who was a partner at the law firm DLA Piper. And according to some sources, before he left the practice in 2020, Emhoff was paid between $1 and $1.5 million a year, which contributed to his and his wife's fortune increasing significantly. And although Kamala Harris's net worth is not known for sure, some portals estimate that she currently has a fortune of $8 million after all taxes have been deducted. Obama on the other hand, for having held the office of President of the United States for eight years, also receiving an annual salary of $400,000, in all he made $3.2 million as head of state. But without a doubt, the income responsible for Obama's enrichment came from his work as a writer. His memoir Dreams from My Father, for example, published in 1995, achieved a great number of sales, resulting in a profit of $6.8 million. Meanwhile, with his bestseller Audacity of Hope and the children's book of the I Sing a Letter to My Daughters, according to Forbes magazine, Obama earned $8.8 .8 million. Another more recent book, A Promised Land, was published in November 2020, selling nearly 890,000 copies in the US and Canada within 24 days of its release. Not to mention that he and his wife make money by giving lectures. Some sources claim that the former First Lady makes $225,000 and the former President makes as much as $400,000 per presentation. In addition to their million-dollar literary empire, the couple made a pretty penny on a creative production partnership they signed with Netflix. The $50 million annual deal calls for the Obamas to produce a diverse mix of content, including series, documentaries, and feature films. And according to Forbes magazine, the couple made an impressive $20.5 million between 2005 and 2016. But with so many jobs and sources of income that Barack Obama to this day, some reports estimate that his fortune has increased even further to as much as $70 million. In other words, Barack Obama easily wins this round. At the end of this fight, we have three points for Kamala Harris against six points for Barack Obama, making him the winner of this battle. But if you believe that there are still other arguments to defend one of the two, write your best justification below. Hey, you like the video? So don't forget about leave your like and comment, and tell some suggestions of another videos, and hopefully we gonna do it. All about channel, deals to satisfy your curiosity.